What up guys, my aunt here with another video. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to my channel. It's been awesome to see it grow. So in this video, I'm gonna actually use the Electron Octatrack to sequence eight different synths in Logic Pro using the ERM multi-clock and the routing that has to happen inside of Logic. All right guys, so let's get to it. The first thing that we have to do is go over here to MIDI. We wanna make sure that everything is connected regarding the input. So one thing that you're gonna notice is that with the uh, ERM multi-clock, the awesome thing is that you have like four different ports and those different ports you're going to set up with the U as you guys have seen right now. And then over here in Logic, you want to make sure that everything is clicked on port one, port two, port three, port four. And based on that, that's how we're going to use this to make sure that everything is triggered. The next thing that we have to do is, uh, you know, we're going to go over here to recording, then recording, and then we want to make sure that the auto demix channel is on. We did this before on another video. I think it was with this one, Launchpad uh, Pro. Uh, that video was pretty cool, uh, just opening up Logic. So the next huge thing, right? Uh, we're gonna go over here, window, and then we are going to go to the MIDI environment. Then in the MIDI environment, we're gonna click, click, and click and ports. And then right over here, this thing, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on here and those three those two things right we're gonna delete them and then after that is done so since we have eight sequences that we're gonna be using with the electron octant track then we're gonna uh, need to do one thing we're gonna have to get the channel splitter i'm gonna split that out it's gonna be from port one and port two so we're gonna use port one and then we're gonna use port two, which would be the third one down. You don't want to use the sum. All right, that's step one. And then we are going to add uh, transformers. So first transformer, we go here, change fix, and then we're going to be channel one. And then this one, channel one, is going to go to the transformer, and then it's going to go here to the sequencer. You can actually rename these ones if you wanted to. So MIDI one. And I'm not going to really rename every single one because if not, it's going to get annoying for you guys. So then we're going to go over here uh, and a new transformer. Boom. Okay. And then we're going to go to channel two. And this one, I sent the sequencer. Okay. And now we're going to go over here. So the other thing that we're going to change is here in a MIDI. MIDI channel, so this is gonna be channel one. I'm actually using this tall V2, really cool synth. Uh, then we're gonna bring in, let me see, so I'm gonna bring in uh, another one from this one, the base one, 101, because it's pretty awesome. Uh, and then right here, my output is gonna go to stereo output. And uh, let me see, so now, let me bump up the volume here so we can hear a little bit. And what's going on so we're actually going to use channel two that's at my channel one in the ear and multi-clock okay See? now channel three is going to be midi two channel two i know this is a little bit confusing but that's kind of like how i have it set up in my uh ear and multi-clock and i really don't want to change everything because it's like like mapped to like the entire studio but now we're going to go over here Ooh, we need to bring that one down sorry guys uh, so now let's bring this one down here. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the A sequencers. I'm going to stop right here because I don't want to bore you guys. And then when we come in, I'm going to explain what I did. And then we're going to go and jump in and start different sequences. All right, guys. See you soon. All right, guys. So we are back after a break, <laughs> after a long break, as you can see, I have more beer. But anyways, so let's get to this. Um, so what I did is I actually ended up doing the same thing for all the different uh, like eight tracks. So I'm gonna show you guys what I'm doing here. Just like a little recap. Let's go here to the MIDI environment and then over here in click and ports. And as you guys can see, I have all the MIDI's done, the MIDI tracks. And then I have, you know, this connection going to the channel splitter and then the channel splitter goes to like all the transformers and the transformers to the sequencer, right? So now you're gonna see right here, so two, is my channel one, right? So you're gonna hear the ARP, then channel two, 
in channel three is the bass line, right? Channel four. So that's kind of cool. Channel five. We have that clap right there. It's a little low in the mix. Let's bring it up a little bit. All right, and then we have this synth membrane that we did. And then right here is where it gets beautiful. You can use the entire rack uh, for the ultra beat, which is pretty amazing. Um, okay, so now if you wanted to like start something, you know, jamming and everything like that, one thing that you would want to do, right, is just start using the OctiTrack uh, as your sequencer. So let's go down. So if I wanted to record this, right, click record here. So the kick, let's go over here to the claps. No, actually that's the, that's the, the membrane synth, sorry. We can also use the trick conditions so you can move it add a little bit of swing or we can actually go over here edit and then we can add some more swing here okay excellent now let's go over here the hats a little loud Okay, so this is kind of like part one to like set the groove. So with this one, on the ARP up here, you know, I'm using the tell bass, and this one I'm using the arpeggiator that comes with this, and this is pretty cool, right? Okay, so then let's go to the bass line. So to make a quick bass line with this, it's pretty cool, right? So let's go over here. Uh, let's put this one in, and then, okay, let's bring this one down to, okay, the ARP, okay, so, let's go to nine, It's a little like groove, right? So using the arpeggiator to like generate some like really interesting bass lines. And we can go over here. We can actually use the LFO. And then we're gonna go over here to the no length, no. We want the range, and we're gonna move the range just a little bit. Actually, 
to start. Let's take this off. that everything is good here. Uh, the other thing that I'm gonna suggest, right? Actually, let's see what we have right now. Okay, so we can actually like get some luscious pads going on. So the LFO started working, I think it might be a little bit too much. So let's say that you're done right and you want to like start messing around with this. The other beautiful thing about the Octatrack is that over here you have the control one and control two, and those are actually CC that you can send into uh, Logic uh, to start changing parameters around. So for this baseline that I have here, right, one thing that I might want to like start experimenting with is going to be the frequency and you know with like any other controller here in logic you're gonna go to controller surface and learn and then over here we're gonna see the cc1 what you see over here we're gonna actually turn it on i'm gonna move it and now you're ready to go so let's bring it down all the way down so we can start messing around with it and then you can actually like do automation and all the other great stuff that you can do with this thing So that's kind of cool, right? Yeah, so this is something that is really unique with uh, the Octatrack logic. Uh, I think that if you have the Octatrack, you can actually like start routing, you know, and sampling and like doing like uh, mangling of the sounds and all that stuff, but like to start a groove with this box using the plugins that you might already have, I think it's a really, really good option. Uh, so hopefully this was really helpful for you guys. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Peace.